I've had mixed feelings over the railway related books I've purchased over the years and in general I don't believe they've been particularly good value for money. When the opportunity arose to review The Railway Heritage of Britain by Gordon Bidle and O.S. Knock, I had a good feeling about it and I wasn't disappointed. Hi, thanks for joining today's review. We'll kick off with an overview of the Railway Heritage of Britain, what it covers, what it doesn't cover, and why I was interested in reviewing it in the first place. We'll then take a quick look through the content itself and the navigation through this book. We'll get into our usual summary, scoring and final recommendation. Sheldrake Press reached out to me a number of weeks ago and asked if I would consider reviewing one of their railway related books. They gave me the option to select which book I wish to review, and in truth I wouldn't have been happy investing time in a book I may have had little or no interest in. Two books on their website did look interesting to me, The Railways of Britain and this book, The Railway Heritage of Britain. I chose the latter as I do have an interest in railway architecture and I also felt the content would age better over time. At the time I probably didn't appreciate the significance of the content in terms of its exact scope. So Sheldrake Press have provided me with this review copy free of charge, but no money has changed hands, and while they have provided me with a discount code, which is in the description, I will not gain from any purchases made with that code. Hence this will be an independent review in line with all of my other reviews. So what exactly is the Railway Heritage of Britain all about? The main scope of this book is to cover more than 500 of the most important railway related structures across mainland UK. And the term structure is used in its broadest sense, including things like signal boxes, railway hotels, goods sheds, as well as the mainstay items such as viaducts and station houses. This main structure related content is approached from the point of view of the big five regions, with a breakdown done on a region by region basis and ultimately down to a county and town level. The backstory to each structure is provided, which includes when it was constructed, by which railway company, who is the architect, and what is its listing status. Along with that is a brief history and how it evolved over time. All of this is presented in a very readable style, making the book both a cover to cover read as well as a reference text for looking up specific structures. While the book touches on the different railway companies and their influence on the architectural development and decor, it isn't about them. Similarly, while it touches on the locomotives and rolling stock, it isn't about them either. The references to these topics are more from a supporting perspective. The book is fundamentally about the structures themselves. It, the book does go into more detail on the individuals who architected and engineered these structures, people like Brunel and Stevenson. One thing to note is that Northern Ireland railways are not covered in this book, so you'll need to look elsewhere for an equivalent text covering that region. You can navigate the book either via the table of contents or the index section at the rear of the book. Each regional section has its own table of contents to guide you through the cities and counties in that region. While the table of contents includes a couple of special feature related entries, it actually excludes a whole raft of other ones which I've captured below. These cover topics of interest that complement the overall core content of the book. So overall, I found The Railway Heritage of Britain to be extremely interesting and highly readable. While it may appear on the surface to be more of a reference book or anthology, its 270 or so pages can easily be read through cover to cover, despite the reference nature of the content. Each individual backstory is interesting in itself and hooks you into the content in a way that makes you want to continue on to the next structural item as you build up a picture for that region. The text is supplemented by extensive photographs and illustrations, over 700 in all, with a good proportion of the photos dating back over 80 years, and some even date back to the mid-1800s. The content of this book is priceless from a railway heritage perspective, and hence the support and endorsement from British Rail in its production. If the architectural and structural engineering aspect of railways is of interest to you, particularly from a historical perspective, then this book is an excellent place to start. So did I find any shortcomings with this book? Well, 
Given that the Railway Heritage of Britain was originally published in 1983, I believe the content is due either for updating or supplementing in order to capture the following items. Number one, to get an updated disposition of each of the listed structures, including any changes, be they in terms of structure, ownership or service usage. Number two, the addition of new entries that have found their way into the listed status over the intervening 40 year period or which warrant such status due to their significance. And number three, it would be good to get updated representative photographs of all of the structures, both new and existing. Whether this update should be in the form of a second volume or an update to the main text in the book is open to debate, and I see arguments for either approach. Regardless of that, I do believe this book warrants being brought up to date. Okay, so let's get into our summary. So we've been looking at the Railway Heritage of Britain, uh, 150 years of railway architecture and engineering. The authors Gordon Beadle and O.S. Nock, as was published in 1990, with the original publication being in 1983. Currently published by Sheldrake Press. The current format is a hardback with a jacket, and it's got a total of 272 pages and over 750 black and white and colour illustrations and photographs. And the selling price, uh, the RRP is uh, 30 pounds sterling. Uh, now, there is a discount code, as I mentioned in the description, uh, to get, get you 20% off that. And if you're in the UK, you'll also get free postage, I think, for because uh, it'll be above £20. Used prices, um, starting from around £10 in general, for once in good, good condition, and you may even get it a bit cheaper than that. And uh, that's all of uh, December 2022. Uh, now, if you are in the in Southern Ireland and you're ordering this, uh, they will cover the VAT for you. And I, I have confirmed that with uh, Sheldrake that they, they will prepay the VAT for you when it, when it comes over. And that just uh, makes it a little bit cheaper for you uh, to get it in and obviously just saves that hassle. So the scoring. So let me go through it. The content, I'm giving a 9 out of 10. And I guess the only reason it isn't a 10 out of 10 is, is just that shortcoming I raised in terms of just bringing that content up to date. The content as it's captured is absolutely fine. It's, it's excellent. And I'm very pleased with it. And I think the, the original authors have done a fantastic job. The only thing now is to bring that content up to date with any changes to those existing structures and adding in any new ones. Uh, that may be appropriate for inclusion now in a like a 2023 version of this particular uh, book. The writing, I'm giving a 10 out of 10. As I said, it's a very easy read. I think they've pitched it just right. You know, typically books like this can be a bit challenging. You know, the, the raw facts and data is there, but they don't make a good read. Uh, this makes a good read as well. So well done to the authors in, in that. I just found it so easy to uh, to go through this book and, and you, you just find yourself, you know, going through sections of it uh, and, and not just not noticing the time passing. So well done on a writing perspective. Illustrations and photos. Again, the main gap here is to bring them up to date. To be honest, I wouldn't get rid of any of the old photos. I, I think it's great to have those, and uh, so absolutely no problem with those. But it would be good to see a current photograph of each of these structures in, in, as it exists today. I think that's the major thing. I think that would be needed to add it here. And obviously, if you're if there's some new entries as as over the last forty years that are going to be added, again, we want to see to date representative photographs of those as well so that's the main criticism of this one the navigation overall I've, i found this fine and i think the approach they took with kind of splitting the navigation between the main table of contents and then at a regional level uh, there's kind of another further kind of ta table of contents uh, at, for each region and i think that's fine and they also have a very detailed and comprehensive index the only gap here is the items i, I mentioned that weren't actually covered in the table of contents and there's a number of them, actually, that I, as I covered earlier on. So that's my reason this is a 9 out of 10. It just would have been nice to see those. And I had to, I had to go back and check a few times, you know, where the, had I missed something where they, they are not. That's a very straightforward thing to address. Uh, the quality and the binding, it's a very nice hard copy book, and I do like it. I think my main issue here is the cover sleeve, which I think would wear quite a bit over time. I think if you're using this book a lot, that type of cover sleeve does does wear and, and does kind of get into kind of a tatty kind of form, which I think is sh a shame for a book like this. 
So I think they might look at an alternative for the, for, but it does need to be a hardbound book, no doubt about this. Binding is very good. This will last a good length of time, I would say. Uh, it's just the cover, and it's a shame to see a nice book like this where, you know, the, the outer sleeve kind of gets tatty over time. And I think if they could look at something to improve that, that would just bring it up to a 10 out of 10 on this particular score. Price value is 10 out of 10. So whether you purchase this for the full recommended retail price or the discounted price, or whether you pick this up in a discounted bookshop or something for five or ten pounds i think either way it's actually well worth the money when you consider what you pay for coach or a locomotive model in this day and age to get a hard copy book with this substantial content in it that is so well written with the the mass of photographs and and illustrations that are included this is just the best value for money that i've seen all year either buying it for yourself or as a gift for the money, it is it is 10 out of 10. We're living in an era of hyperinflation, price increases across the board on everything, and to see that this is just at this sort of price level, it is well worth the money. So 10 out of 10 on the value front, and that's regardless of how you acquire it. Obviously, if you can pick it up in a second-hand book, bookstore and you're happy with that, then you're going to get it for an absolute steal. So overall, uh, it's 9.1 out of 10. Obviously, updating this to, to bring it up to current level and addressing a couple of those other smaller items would get this up to pretty well a 10 out of 10. Okay, so let's get into the final recommendation. So in an online age like we have right now, where content can be shallow in depth, it can be very short term in terms of its relevance, it can be polarized and subjective in its nature, it's really refreshing to spend time with a book like this that is the opposite of all of those things. The Railway Heritage of Britain is a timeless record of the most valuable structures as recognised by their protected status that were, and still are, integral parts of the railway infrastructure of mainland UK. It covers their origins, their backstory, the people who architected and built them, as well as the regional context in which they existed. It could have read like an anthology or an encyclopedia, but instead it's presented in a very accessible way that makes consumption of its 270 pages both an enjoyable and informative experience. It can be both an end in itself, or it can also be a stepping stone to further more in-depth research on a specific structure. Its comprehensive index can serve as a first port of call before succumbing to what Dr. Google chooses to offer up to you. While I would love to see this publication updated, that takes nothing away from the current version and its relevance and interest level to any UK modeler, railway historian, or even someone with an interest in UK architectural heritage. At a cost that is less than a typical double O gauge coach, and much less if purchased second hand, the Railway Heritage of Britain comes highly recommended. For any UK enthusiast or modeler, I can't think of a better return on your investment, and for anyone looking at a present for their railway loving relative or friend, it's a great option. I want to thank the good folks at Sheldrake Press for giving me the option to select my own preference from their back catalogue and providing me with this hidden gem that I know we'll be referring back to in the future as I look to implement some equivalent structures to what were captured here on my own layout. I've posted a link in the description and the discount code you should use to get 20% off the recommended retail price. So let us know your thoughts on this book in the comments as well as your own input and any other railway-related books you might recommend. So thanks for joining today's review. With some Acura scale items landing in the next few weeks, it looks like it could be a very busy run into Christmas. So please join me to take a look at the Class 92 and the Mark V coaches in the near future. And in the meantime, take care and happy modelling. <laughs>